Greetings from Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland, and I'm your host, Bill Stone. As with yesterday's show, today's topic crosses several of my interests, unfortunately unlike yesterday's, which was kind of fun to do. This one crosses my interest in not so much a good way, but I think it's important for you to hear it anyway. In my prior video, Never Believe the Victim, for which there is a link in my description box below, I discuss why I no longer am inclined to assume an accuser of sexual assault is telling the truth. They must, in my opinion, at least, at least, go to the police and press charges. Now today, for good or ill, I get to make this even more specific. Now in that previous video, I talked about Vic Mignogna, actor Vic Mignogna, and how he is currently the victim of a witch hunt that is being conducted over utterly frivolous allegations. And today I'm going to make some even more specifics and why admissions, I mean accusations rather, aren't proof, particularly when they're made on Twitter. I'm very specifically going to talk about one, Alex, Alec Peters. Now, Alec Peters is the principal behind the Star Trek fan film Star Trek Axanar, where Vic Mignogna here as Captain Kirk was the principal behind uh, Star Trek Continues, which was a 11-episode fan film. Star Trek Axanar is intended to be a three-episode sort of historical uh, documentary, which is going to be kind of interesting. However, he is also, Alec Peters, one of the loudest individuals conducting this Me Too witch hunt against Vic Mignogna. Now, until only a couple of days ago, I was a supporter of Axonars, but a couple of things have happened that have turned me completely against it, all of which have to do with Alec Peters. Now, a couple of days ago, Alec got into a rather abusive conversation with the YouTuber MeccaRandom42, whom I subscribe to. I suggest you subscribe to her. She did a video about this, and I have a link to that below in my subscription box, and I certainly suggest you watch it. The exchange was completely eye-opening to me about the sort of person that Alec is. I have since had the opportunity to interact with him directly, as well as learn more about him via information sent to me from individuals who've also had to interact with him. And what I found was generally rather appalling. Alex's stated position on this is simple. Accusations are all that are necessary to establish guilt or innocence of something, particularly sexual assault and a pedophilia. Now, going to the police is not required in his worldview. Pressing charges is not required in his worldview. A trial is not required. Presenting evidence is not required. A verdict is not required. In Alex's worldview, the only thing that's required is an accusation, and that's all. Now, for me, this chips away at one of the very underpinnings of civilization itself, which is the concept that every individual is innocent until proven guilty. If you argue for guilt until proven innocent, you are arguing for a return to the Dark Ages, a return to mob rule, and a return to witch trials. Now, what I'm going to talk about with respect to Alec Peters, I'm going to try to put myself into as much as possible into what I call fair witness mode. Now, if you don't know what that is, Robert A. Heinlein suggested in his novel, A Stranger in a Strange Land, that there should be a profession of people who were called fair witnesses. And what fair witness would do would only trust those things that they could perceive for themselves and would not make any assumptions about those things, nor make any assumptions that things might have changed once they were finished looking at them or perceiving them in some way. And to give you an example of exactly what I mean by this, if you had a fair witness and you ask them what the color of the house across the street was, a fair, victim, I'm sorry, a fair witness rather, would tell you that it is white on this side. A fair witness would not assume that the entire house is white. And even if you walked them around the house, wall by wall, they said this wall, the side wall is white, the back wall is white, the other side wall is white, and right around. They'd say, okay, the wall was white when I looked at it. They wouldn't assume that, who knows, magically or otherwise, the wall wouldn't suddenly turn green the moment they didn't have their eyes on it. 
The moment they looked away from something, the moment they were no longer perceiving it for themselves, they made no assumptions about it. The house is white on this side. So most of what I'm not going to discuss is because they weren't really exactly public. I did not personally have anything to do with them, and frankly, I'd be a little uncomfortable discussing them because of that. I have always attempted to put myself in this fair witness mode, mode and so I just must not allow what are emotional judgments to cloud my thinking, nor what I bring to the channel. My reputation is to bring facts before you. While I certainly have my opinions and they do come out, I am not a, per a perfect fair witness. I don't want to jeopardize my reputation by allowing emotion and hearsay to cloud my judgment and my facts that I bring to you. So what happened was, the day before yesterday, Alec Peters and I got into an exchange on Facebook in which his views became uh, very crystal clear and he got very emotional about it. The exchange has since become invisible to me for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. However, they were public and it was a conversation with me and it was extremely revealing of his mindset. So the following here is that exchange in which I do have to paraphrase to some extent because the original is lost to me, but here is how it went down. I was suggesting something else having to do with Vic Mignogna, and Alec entered the conversation, and he claimed that accusations made on Twitter were the same as testimony offered in a court. I want you to understand something about Twitter. Twitter is, with no doubt whatsoever, the single largest repository of stupidity in the history of the human race. I live in some fear that 4,000 years from now, some Indiana Jones type won't unearth a Twitter data center and come to the conclusion that we're all complete morons. Twitter is first and foremost a marketing platform. Now, while some of you came to me from Twitter, and while I do enjoy engaging my viewers on Twitter, it is still a marketing platform. At the end of the day, when you're you know, engaging with me, I am trying to make myself appear in a positive light, if I can, because I want to push my show. Twitter is nothing more than a marketing platform and should not be assumed to be anything else. So accusations made about anything on Twitter should simply be just completely ignored. All that matters in the end are charges a trial, evidence, and a verdict. Those four things are required. Twitter is nothing more than a bunch of faceless, screaming harpies, and nothing you see on Twitter, Twitter is real. It is all just marketing to some extent or another. Anyway, back to the conversation. Alec told me that tweets are as good as testimony, and I said, nope. Going to the cops, pressing charges, a trial, and a verdict are proof. Well, then Alec told me, to, reminded me about Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, Les Moonves, uh, and he said that they, he believed that they, you know, were, since they were accused on Twitter, that that was adequate to prove guilt. I reminded him and that in Weinstein's and Spacey's cases in particular, charges had been filed and trials are either in progress or forthcoming. In Moonves's case, there has been no charges, and because of this, I can do nothing but assume that he is innocent until proven guilty. The fact that CBS fired him does not prove his guilt. It proves that CBS fired him, and that's all. And in all cases, I am waiting for a verdict. Until then, I presume that a person is innocent until they are proven guilty. Then things kind of got weird. Alex then claimed that no charges had been filed against any of them. And so I did a quick Google search and I found page after page of news stories about both Weinstein and Spacey's charges and their trials. And then Alex said, well, one is really only innocent until proven guilty in a criminal trial. But they're still guilty if they're accused on Twitter. And I flatly told him, no. You're always innocent until proven guilty and to argue otherwise is to argue a return to the Dark Ages. Alec then mentioned that Vic Mignogna's ex fiance Michelle Specht, was agreeing with these unsupported allegations and accusations, and that I should naturally believe her. And I told him quite bluntly, I never believe someone's ex. I've been around for 54 years and I've seen too many exes lie about stuff like this. I have had it done to me, not about sexual assault, but something almost as laughable. 
It is the primary reason that I no longer automatically believe that an accuser is telling the truth. I believe that an accuser is lying unless they've gone to the cops. And of course, I was, uh, it was a long conversation, so by this time I was feeling kind of snarky because he'd been kind of um, confrontational about it the whole time. So I said, however, I am definitely interested in the fact that Michelle Specht is single again because I was always very jealous of Vic over her. And she's from my part of the country, so, you know, I think I have a chance. And, and by the way, Michelle, you know, hey, uh, you know, if you're not doing anything, you know, call me. I'm interested. Alec then accused me outright of just backing a pedophile. He says, everybody says they did it. And I said, well, then everybody should go to the police. Even one person should go to the police. I will start taking these accusations seriously when there are charges preferred. Alec then mentioned that Funimation, a company that had employed Vic for some time, had just fired him, and he claimed that this was then therefore proof of the accusations. So I explained to him that in a career in IT that spanned over 40 years, I have been fired several times. It didn't mean I was a pedophile, it just meant that I was fired. <laughs> and neither I nor uh, Alec have any privy to Funimation nor Vic's business dealings, and so we don't know what caused them to fire. The fact that he was fired only proves he was fired. Now at this point, Alec became increasingly irate, rehashing the same arguments while I continued to rehash the only sane position. You should not assume a, an accuser is telling the truth unless they press charges, have a trial, present evidence, and a verdict is reached. Everyone is always innocent until proven guilty. And the conversation just became more heated and accusatory on Alex's part. And finally, as I said to him, because I'd had enough, I said, I'm curious, by the way, you seem to be spending quite a lot of time on this subject, both on Facebook and on Twitter. Aren't you supposed to be making a fan film? And this caused him to be get rather upset, and he replied back that he asked if I shouldn't be getting back to digging ditches, apparently not understanding that my channel name does not have anything to do with what I did for a living. So I said, no, I'm enjoying my retirement after 40 years in IT with my YouTube channel. And then Alec blocked me, which is why I can only paraphrase part of the conversation, because it's become invisible to me. So I have to tell you, when you have this argument with people and you are trying to, to get them to understand the sane option and why accusations do not equal proof, what I just described to you is how you win the argument. You simply and matter-of-factly, as unemotionally as possible, simply insist on charges, a trial, evidence, and a conviction, an, a, 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 um, a verdict insist on those four things and that to do otherwise to argue otherwise is to argue for a return to the dark ages don't become emotional if anything be totally unemotional just stick to the requirements charges trial evidence verdict and that to argue otherwise is to argue for a return to the dark ages the reason you win with this is because it leaves the individual who wants to do things about mob rule based on nothing but innuendo and accusations, it leaves them with nowhere to go. They will invariably become emotionally accusatory and eventually just give up out of sheer frustration. Now, there are some other issues about Alec Peters. And in the process of preparing for the show, I was provided with a great deal of information dating back five years or more that were deeply disturbing. I won't bring them up here because I don't want to, you know, jeopardize this reputation I have, or at least trying to bring you, you know, what I know to be the truth or what I've observed personally. But I have no reason to doubt uh, the veracity of these things. I'm just not going to bring them in. They were frankly quite disturbing. They were entirely consistent with what Mecha Random 42 showed on her own channel, and in many instances were in fact much, much worse. In fact, I would have to theorize that the main reason that Alec objects to Vic Mignogna actually stems back to issues that he had with Vic and other fan filmmakers going back five to ten years or more. 
So why is all this happening? We see it happening over and over all the time. Kavanaugh hearings, Vic Mignogna, all kinds of other people who we don't see any charges to. We just see accusations on Twitter and it's destroying their lives. The reason for this is very simple. It's the Me Too movement. Now, as I have said many times in the past, Hollywood, California, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. It is a place where horrible people do horrible things to other horrible people on a daily basis. And it is a place where rape and child molestation rule the day. Now, Me Too was a good idea when it was going after people like Harvey Weinstein, where you could get charges, a trial, presenting evidence, and a verdict in some cases. It has now become something totally different. Me Too is now very toxic, and it is dangerous to anyone, particularly men. It has become a way for someone to make charges of sexual misconduct against anyone and have them tried on Twitter the largest repository in the history of, the st of stupidity in the history of the human race, rather than in a court of law. Me Too has now completely outlived its usefulness. Me Too has now become nothing more than a modern day witch hunt movement. And if you want Me Too to go the way of the dinosaur, and you should, then ignore the accusations. Write them off. Assume they are lies because they probably are. Instead, insist on that foundation of civilization, that everyone is innocent until proven guilty, and that guilt must be discovered via charges, a trial, evidence, and a verdict. If you see someone making accusations on Twitter or anyone else, ask if they have pressed charges. And if they say no, call them a liar and stop communicating with them. Now, as I explained in that other video, Never Believe the Victim, I explained how the accusations against Vicks are baseless. No one has pressed charges, there has been no trials, there has been no evidence, and there has been no verdict. Therefore, Vic Mignogna is innocent. Everyone is always innocent until proven guilty, and guilt must be discovered via charges, a trial, evidence, and a verdict. So once again, I will throw up my hashtag. I stand with Vic. And so that is really all I have to say about the subject for today. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please do like, sub, hit the notification bell, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, and pets to do the same. And I'd appreciate your support via my subscribe tar, my PayPal tip jar, or a page on my website where you can support me further. And I read descriptions to all three in my uh, description box below. So I thank you for watching and thank you for your support. And remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, news and commentary from the heartland. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.